This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 314. Big Wins, the Cornerstone of Financial Freedom, part one by J.D. Roth of moneyboss.com. And I am Dan, your host, and I'm here each Monday through Friday reading to you from some of the best personal finance blogs anywhere. And uh, thanks for listening on this Thursday. I'm back today with a post from J.D. Roth, and he's talking about big wins. And this post is a little bit on the long side, so as I like to do, I'm gonna break it up into two episodes for you, the first half today, and I'll finish it up tomorrow. So with that, let's hear part one of JD's post as we optimize your life. Big Wins, The Cornerstone of Financial Freedom, part one, by JD Roth of moneyboss.com. You don't need a high income to achieve financial independence. Making more money helps, sure, but if you're diligent about cutting costs, it's possible to reach financial freedom on even an average salary. I want you to meet my friend, John. John is a 79-year-old retired shop teacher. He's a millionaire, but you'd never know it. John started life as a carpenter. In his 30s, he went back to school to become a teacher. He spent the next 20 years teaching shop at a junior high school in a poor part of town. He retired to financial freedom at age 58. He never had a huge income, and he didn't inherit a fortune. So how'd he get rich? He pinched his pennies and doted on his dollars. John achieved financial independence by ruthlessly cutting costs. John doesn't live in a mansion. He lives in the same small ranch house he bought for $10,500 in 1962. He paid off his mortgage early and has now lived in the place for 53 years. John doesn't drive a brand new Mercedes or BMW. He drives a 1998 Chevy minivan he bought for cheap five years ago. It's ugly, but he doesn't care. It meets his needs and he has no plans to upgrade. John doesn't take lavish vacations. He spends his summers in southeast Alaska on an old 38-foot fishing boat that he bought with cash in 1995. He spends his winters doing volunteer work on farms and ranches in New Zealand. John doesn't like to dine in fancy restaurants. He'd rather make his own meals at home. For me, restaurants are a waste of money, he says. I don't appreciate them. Does John sound like a typical millionaire to you? We're constantly bombarded by messages that wealthy people enjoy lavish lifestyles filled with luxury. From my experience meeting with dozens of millionaires over the past decade, this kind of lifestyle is the exception, not the rule. Most wealthy people I know are like John. They're quiet millionaires. But don't just take my word for it. Let's look at what the experts say. Lifestyles of the Rich and Fameless In The Millionaire Next Door, authors Thomas Stanley and William Danko share what they learned through years of academic research into the habits of America's wealthy. Here's one key takeaway. What are three words that profile the affluent? Frugal, frugal, frugal. Being frugal is the cornerstone of wealth building. They write that millionaires tend to play great offense with money. Their incomes are much higher than average, but they also play great defense. They're not big spenders, they're thrifty. They opt out of consumer culture, making purchases based on their personal needs and wants rather than status and fashion. Few people can sustain profligate spending habits and simultaneously build wealth, write the authors. Millionaires become millionaires by budgeting and controlling expenses, and they maintain their affluent status the same way. Study after study shows the same thing. To get and stay rich, you have to manage your lifestyle. You can't out-earn dumb spending. Great, you get it. To achieve your goals, you've got to cut costs. But how? There are two schools of thought. Most money writers emphasize saving on small stuff. They teach how to clip coupons, conserve electricity, and spend less on entertainment. These small wins are usually quick and easy to achieve. A few folks urge readers to pursue big wins. They argue that the quickest way to wealth is to spend less on big ticket items like your home and your car. The downside to this approach? Big wins take a lot of work and opportunities to pursue them are rare. I believe a smart money boss does both. She practices thrift on a daily basis and she seizes every opportunity to slash spending on the big stuff. Frugality is an important part of personal finance. You could save maybe 50 cents a day by drinking a glass of water instead of a can of soda. That doesn't mean much if you only do it once, but over the course of an entire year, that single change would increase your personal profit by nearly $200. When taken together, many such small economies make a noticeable difference. Small amounts do matter. Rather than provide some made-up examples of how much you could save, here are actual numbers from my own life. When I dug out of $35,000 in debt a few years ago, I decided to switch my cable TV package from $65.82 per month 
to $12.01 per month, saving $645.72 every year. Get rid of my home phone line, roughly $46.50 a month, and my subscription to Audible, $21.95 per month, saving $821.40 per year. Cancel my magazine and newspaper subscriptions, saving $137 a year. Make use of the public library instead of shopping at bookstores, saving $391.95 in the first year. Plant a vegetable garden to grow my own produce, saving more than $300 per year. Yes, I'm such a nerd that I kept a spreadsheet to track how much I saved. With these changes alone, I increased my cash flow by $2,281.61 per year. That's an additional profit of almost $200 every month. You won't get rich, slowly or otherwise, by cutting your cable bill or growing your own tomatoes. But when small changes are part of an ongoing campaign of saving and investing, they can bring big changes indeed. True story. I recently had a friend ask me how to get out of debt. You can start by getting rid of your $200 cable package, I told him. No way, he said. That's the first thing everyone says and it'll be the last to go. TV's important to me. Right. More important than being debt-free, apparently. The magic of thinking big. Hear that? in tomorrow's episode. You just listened to part one of the post titled Big Wins, The Cornerstone of Financial Freedom by J.D. Roth of moneyboss.com. And I'm gonna finish this up for you in tomorrow's show. But before I go, I have not asked you to share this podcast in a while. So if you find it helpful, please do consider telling a friend or family member about us. There's actually a cool new feature in the newest version of iMessages, that's text messaging on Apple devices. If you go to this podcast or an episode in the iPhone podcast app, you can click on the three dots next to it and choose to share it. If you send it as an iMessage, a friend would then actually be able to play the episode right from the text message. Of course, you can always talk to friends and family in person too, just show them how to subscribe right there on their phone. That's the easiest way any kind of sharing of this podcast would be greatly appreciated. And that will do it for episode 314. I'll be back tomorrow to finish up today's post. So I'll see you there in the Friday show where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.